from Hollywood. Come on now. It's the Tom Likas Show. Man, what we trying to say with Tom? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. It's Likas 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think at 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. I am your professor. This is unique. Hey. This is unique. Um, I'm 20. I like. I have a boyfriend. He's 39 or whatever. I have a two-year-old son. And, like, I'm faithful. I'm Nothing pretty- unique about that. Huh? <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, but I'm a girl and stuff and and like i don't know i just i'm like everybody's telling me oh you should be single you should be you're young you should be having fun you should have a guy for this a guy for that and blah 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 but like i love my boyfriend and like i don't know like what to do do you think i should do is is he the father of your child yeah he's around he's around no no is your boyfriend the father of your child oh no he's not well you do get around huh no. <laughs> no, no. See, I lost my virginity to that boy. I did. I lost my virginity to that boy. And then after... And but, and you had a child at 18. Why? Uh, I don't know. It was like... I was just... I was just a bad mistake. Not even a mistake. Just being careless, I guess. You were careless. Well, then it was a mistake. Well... I don't. I don't want to call it a mistake. I know you don't want to call it a mistake, but that's what it is. <laughs> that's my baby. OJ. OJ did not want to call uh, Nicole Brown Simpson's death a murder, but that's what it was. Uh, he did it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Like my boyfriend, he's a good guy. And uh, I don't know. Well, why. they're all good guys when they're the boyfriend, and then later on, they're jerks. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> right? You're right. You're right. I mean, why can't you just enjoy your younger years? It's going to apply for everybody then that a 20 year old should not have a girl, a boyfriend, and Bob or a girlfriend because, you know, sometimes it may work. I mean, it's working so far. Huh? I mean, it's really not. I mean, um. I've been there, too, before, so, like, and he's been there. Tolerance policy? Yeah! You can't say the BS word on the air. It's listed on my blog, on MySpace. One of the many words you can't say on the air. You say it, we have to hang up. Ooh, ow. Oh, go to MySpace.com slash Tom Likas. If you're not sure what word you can't say on the air... Go to our blog at myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Get educated before you call in so you don't get hung up on. Ugh. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Mike on Likus 101. Hello. Hi, Tom. Uh, I'm great to finally talk to you. Um, I need your advice on something. Okay. Okay, um... Well, basically, uh, I'm an illegal immigrant, and I basically have to get married because I've exhausted all of my options, and I have a girl, and, I mean, I love her, but I don't feel like I'm ready to get married yet. Well, so you don't don't, well, your choices are live here illegally, leave the country, or get married. Which one do you pick? I mean, I definitely want to stay here and, you know, continue to do my thing over here because you know it's just the time is coming where i kind of have to choose something and you're right and i just wanted to find out what you would do if you were in the situation i guess i guess it would depend on what country i came from and whether i wanted to go back there well i definitely don't want to go back because i've lived here basically all my life so it's not like i'm from there i don't feel like i'm from there i feel like i'm an american basically all right and uh why didn't you ever deal with this in the past um, well, uh, I mean, uh, when I was younger, it wasn't really my, up to me, and, you know, from the time that I became 18, uh, I've been trying to deal with it, but uh, basically I've exhausted all of my options, 
and like there's really no way for me to get it now unless I get married or you know some miracle happens and I win some type of lottery. All right. And you don't want to be married, but uh, you don't want to have kids or anything like that, do you? Um, I do at some point. I mean, I, but not I, with somebody you don't love and that you don't want to marry, do you? Well, I do love the girl, but I don't feel like I'm ready to be married at, at, at my like now. Or, you well, know? you don't have a choice. Okay. Oh, I mean, your other choice is to live here illegally. Yeah, and I don't want to continue to do that because it's just dangerous. <laughs> okay, so this is what you have to do. Okay. But if I were you, wouldn't have a kid, at least not until you've got your green card, and you know for sure that that's what you want to do. Because okay. right now, you can't be objective about whether you love this girl. You can't. Mm -hmm. She's yeah, your ticket in. Okay. And so you can't be objective. Do not have children if you do this. Okay. At least until you have a green card. And that's a couple of years away. Oh, definitely. Now, you do understand you're going to have to live as husband and wife. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I mean, if I decide to go that route, I guess I would have, you know, you know, I have to go full bore. You have to live in the same place. You have to be prepared with snapshots of the two of you on vacation. You got to do your tax returns together and be able to produce them. You've got to show her and you getting mail at the same address, including utility bills. Okay. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah, I do. Uh, and. It sounds kind of, it's really, like, scary to me, so I, I was hoping that maybe there's another way. No, there isn't. <laughs> the other way is to, the, the other ways are to live here illegally or to leave the country. Okay. Those are the other ways. All right, Tom, well, thanks for your advice. I'm definitely going to take it into consideration. Uh, Just please promise me you will not have children, at least until you get your green card, and then you can be objective about who you're with at that time. Okay. I definitely promise that. All right. Okay. Thanks. Good luck, Mike. Thank you. Wow. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. It's Ray on Like Us One Hundred One with your professor. Hello. Hey, Dad. How's it going? Going okay, sir. <laughs> Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you so much. Um, I was calling to have a unique situation here. Um, first that's all, what the caller. Many... That's what the caller unique said. Yeah. Uh, well, well, it wasn't off, so unique. <laughs> What's that? It wasn't so unique. She got knocked yeah. up at 18 or 17 or something like that. That's hardly unique. Well, yeah, this isn't nothing like that. But okay. I'm one of your many gay sons, and you know uh -huh. you have many. Oh, I know. But I have a question for you. I, yeah. I wanted to get your advice because this has been eating me up for the last week. Uh, my boyfriend asked me to reformat his computer because it was having problems with the operating system, and I went ahead and did that. He doesn't know how to do it himself, so he gave me the laptop to do it at my house. And he was too cheap well, to call Geek Squad? or Well, yeah, well, they're going to charge, like, so much money, and I can just do it myself, you know? Right. Like, just set it up and go to sleep, and it's done in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so what he did is he made a folder on the desktop that had all the pictures and documents that he wanted to keep, right? Yeah. That I wouldn't get rid of. And I said, okay, fine, I can do that. So anyway, so I guess curiosity got the best of me, and he said there's pictures in there of us, like different parties we've gone to. And so I thought, okay, I'll just go back and reminisce. And we're both to the point now to where we want to settle down. And anyway, I look at the photographs, and it's a lot of uh, por pornographic pictures of yeah. him and his ex-boyfriends, right? Oh. And it's like crazy stuff. And I could at first I didn't know they were his ex-boyfriends because he wasn't in any of the pictures at first. Until later on, I realized, oh, that's him. But he's a lot younger in the pictures. And so I thought, well, you know, he and I have a very honest relationship. We've disclosed our sexual past. We're past that, you know. And I'm very much, I always had the motto where I can't change someone's past, but I can shape their present and their future. So I'm willing to kind of like eat my words, you know. But it kind of still eats at me. That I, I, I've had a pretty ambitious sexual past. I'm sure you have too, Dad. And I have an ambitious sexual present, I'll tell you what. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, me too, you know. So so I feel like I would be kind of hypocritical if I made a big deal about it. And, of course, he doesn't know that I looked into this folder. I didn't want to say anything about it. 
But I, I don't know if it's something, if, it, if I'm worrying over nothing, because we're, he's so committed to me and I'm so committed to him, and I, I, I'm willing to take this to my grave. If you think it's something that's just unnecessary to get to get oh, worked up about, I have your answer. I mean, look, uh, I've said this on the air. It makes straight guys uncomfortable, but you know, straight men and gay men have many things in common. Yeah. Not the least of which is that we like the shortest distance between two points. We don't like uh, whining and dining. We just want to get right down to business, and. I must tell you, although you may not be one of the men who feels this way, and by the way, I'm not either, uh, but most men love pornography. Oh, I'm not any different. Trust me, I'm not. And that but includes... It's when that someone you love, isn't it? You know, well, it changes it a little bit. Yeah, but here's the thing. Now, <laughs> these are not pictures of love. These are pictures of sex. True. And that's the big difference here. Uh, I'd be more upset if he had pictures of the two of them on vacation holding hands than I would be seeing hardcore pornography because yeah. that's a guy thing. It's you something a lot of guys like. And now that you mention it, the other pictures that are of us are vacation photographs. The pictures of you. Yeah, well, because, you know, he and I have not taken a camera into the bedroom, I guess you'd say. But so that is a contrast right there. Do you see the difference between the way it he makes, feels about that person and the way he feels about you? That makes total sense, yes. So th this is just hardcore porn, and guys are into it. And by the way, straight guys, you know, they keep the copies of Playboy magazine going back to 1972. Uh -huh. And some of them they only take out once in a while. As if you dated yeah. these women, you know, you, hey, November 1983, she was hot. And you pull that out once, and then you stick it back under the bed. Uh, it's like that. It's it's just for masturbatory purposes, and it has. There's no emotion involved there at all. Okay, I, you know what? I kind of thought that, but I, well, I'm glad to get your opinion on it because I haven't mentioned this to anybody uh, except Dean. <laughs> oh, really? And I'm now, ready to and rock. Now you. Well, uh, Dean, no, uh, Dean lives in the hood. Dean lives uh, right there at the uh, epicenter. I'm ready to rock. <laughs> yeah, that makes total sense. All right, great. Hey, Dad, can you take me out Halle Berry style? Halle Berry style. Here you go, Ray. <laughs> Commercial breaks. More phone calls. My head is spinning. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5 800. Tom Likas 101. I am your professor every week at this time, baby. Jennifer, you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. That's good. Um,. I was a first-time caller um, earlier this week, and I apologize. Um, I went under your website, and I understand your rules. Um, actually, for a long time, I still listen to your show, and there's things that I've always disagreed with in terms of being a single mom and, um, you know, screwing guys for child support, but... I actually don't get child support. I I um I, I made an agreement that you know if you just uh, save a trust fund and a college fund for her, I'll be fine with that. So I've been doing it on my own, but I'm pretty depressed right now because um I actually have been in denial with uh, the things that you've mentioned uh, in terms of you know. Single, you know, not to date single moms, and I've come to a conclusion that every date that I've had since I've had her, I get a message. Oh, you know what? I just can't give you what you want. You mean the guys tell you that? Yes, and um, I try. I try to. I I don't know if it's because. Um, I, I, I meet guys, like, I don't meet guys at bars. I don't meet guys at, I meet them, like, at big places, like, with my daughter, you know, uh, whether if it's Disneyland or whatever. But, but um, 
I don't introduce them right away with my daughter until I know it's, you know, leading to something serious, but that's when I can see that they don't want to get involved and they're not ready or they already have kids or I I don't know. Most it's of just, us just aren't interested. Yeah, and um, I feel like I'm going to just be on my own for forever, kind of. I can't see well, for another 14 years or so. I don't know. I was hoping you'd cheer me up. Well, dear, I mean, you wanted to do this. You thought you knew better than the professor and others. Yeah. And you went ahead and did something that I recommend you not do. I actually didn't, I actually didn't um, know anything about your show um, until, like, my daughter was two years old. And of course, obviously, um, I, I I was thinking. And many women, many women who call this program uh, get very angry at me for saying what I say. But you've seen for yourself that it's true. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. Uh, and I think the guys listening can see. What it is that they, they don't want to get involved in. See what we're hearing right now. This is exactly what a guy doesn't want to hear. Yeah, that's, that's, and she's my world, you know? She's your world uh, for the next 15 years or so. So. Well. I mean, I don't know how I can cheer you up because I tell women all the time, do, do not do this. Do not do this. Do not well, do this. Well, I just got an IUD and stood it for 10 years. <laughs> Little late, dear. And um, I'm applying to law school. Law so, school? Yeah, I just... Um, Aren't you doing things in reverse order? Wouldn't it have made sense, IUD, law school, uh -huh. child, rather than child, law school, IUD? Wouldn't it make more sense? I was abandoned when I was 17, and I was on my own. And after I graduated with my bachelor's, I just went and partied on, and I took it to extreme where um, I was basically, um, like, I had no idea what the world was like because I was busy with school and focused on work that by the time I got out, I was so, like, naive. But you had heard about birth control, right? Exactly. Yeah, it, it, it had been on the news and stuff. You probably read about it, right? Right. Probably knew someone who was on birth control. I don't disagree with you. So why didn't but you I, use it? There's no excuse. It, there's no excuse why didn't I use it, and I made a decision I had her. All right, so you made your decision. And this is the consequence of making that decision. Guys aren't interested in joining that world. Not only joining that world, but being last on your list. So now, now I'm doing everything reverse. I'm going back to law school, working part-time, and just focusing on just her and I. And that's, what I guess I have to do is what I thought about. Because I, how can I focus on a guy? You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, it's like I can't even go. I don't even have the energy to even go there. And um, darling, at best, at best, you're a booty yeah. call. Huh? At best, you're a booty call. Exactly, and I, and it's like I'm, I'm very, I'm very beautiful, and it's just um, not something. The only rummage for my lips, obviously, but then once my daughter comes around, it's just like, I got a good, that's when I started listening to you, and then I'm just calling to tell you that I'm doing everything reverse, and yeah. for those girls that don't understand um, and get upset with you that, you know, nobody wants to date a single man, um, single mom. I'm here to t a single mom, I'm here to, I'm here to tell these moms is that it's difficult and um, it's going to be hard for me when I go to law school but it's, it's, it's not what it's like and it's only the child that suffers 
And I can so, only imagine what it will be like trying to study law with that noise going on in the background. Um, you know what? It's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard, but, you know, I want to, I want to, I want her to know that I'm something and I want to live a life and achieve and prove to myself that I can still do this. And, 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 and what kind of attorney are you going to become? I actually, um, want to work with, um, since I was abandoned, I want to work with children, like maybe the Department of Children and Family Services. And they don't get paid that much, but it's my passion to help children who have been oh, abandoned. Darling, I, I, if I may. Don't compound the situation you created. Going to law school will cost you over a hundred thousand dollars in student loans. Don't study to become an attorney that doesn't make a lot of money. That's what somebody told me. <laughs> that well, and I'm somebody too, and I just told you, don't do it. So what do you suggest, corporate, like? Well, I suggest you do something corporate or something, uh, uh, you know, anything but helping the impoverished. Because, again, I think people who help the impoverished should be people who themselves are not impoverished. You're right. You're right. And plus, it's going to bring back bad memories, I feel. How would you ever be able to pay back the student loan you'd have to take out to go to law school? Well, I'm a single mom, and I don't get paid that much. But that's so my point. How would I'll you be ever be able to pay back? Aid. Yeah, but you're not going to get that much financial aid. Um. Well, I have a, I have a savings account, so yeah, you have six figures in it. No, twenty thousand. Darling, not enough. This is law school we're talking about. Well, I think it goes. You know, I'm just. I'm, I'll see how it goes, but, you know, I just wanted to throw out there that, you know, that's something that I'm going to try to pursue and figure out the loans, and that's what I'm doing. Well, here's what I'm telling you to do. Study to become an attorney that makes money. Thank you, Tom. You can then do pro bono work. You can then volunteer to do things, but come on. Don't spend over $100,000 to be somebody who makes $40,000 a year. No, exactly. And especially if I'm going to put three years in it. That's right. Yeah. Well, obviously, you have my kid in the background, so um, thanks for your... Actually, I just pretty much repeated everything that you've already repeated on the radio. Right, so. but ju just a, a final word from you, Jennifer, to the girls out there who think it's possible to have kids and still do whatever they want with their lives. Well... So, what, say that again? Uh, a final word from you. For all uh -huh. the girls out there who think they can just pop out babies and do whatever they want with their lives. No, because listen to this. I, it's like I have my daughter here, and I'm trying to speak to her on the phone, and she's screaming. And it's like I'm telling you, for all these girls that think that they just want to pop out a kid, they don't understand that they can't just leave and go on a day like you said. They just can't leave and um, go out, like, to the weekend. Like, I took her out on the weekend, but it was her and I. It wasn't a boyfriend. It changes your whole... You, it, cha it changes... It changes... Stay right here, honey. It changes um, everything to a point where... Um, it's no longer you. You have given up your your life to somebody else, and you say, come to And look, this is a distraction. It's just like you can't just, you feel guilty if you're going to go party because that's not the thing. You don't want to come home drunk. You can't, you can't, you can't even go there because you can't wake up with a hangover. I mean, your life is literally given up. And, you know, there's a lot of young people they're, they're in their early 20s. It doesn't matter if they got their master's and they got a good job. It's just not fair for a child to not have a parent and do it, you know, you know, not be married. It's just, it's not fair. And, you know, now it's like I'm paying my dues for the next, you know. 15 years. 
you know, 15 years, and I'm just, um, you guys, I, you girls, you guys have to know that it's just, you guys got to hear, you just heard of that, and it's just, you. And it's like, the, the it's like this about 16 hours a day, right? Oh, I don't get I don't I don't get a break. I don't get a break and um if I have to work on a weekend I have to get a sitter and if I'm gonna do a booty call, they have to come after she comes to bed, after she goes to bed, but it's like I don't wanna do that anymore. It's like I'm so over that booty call that you end up feeling like just you and you know, it's just not an exam as I'm maturing because I am very young. As I'm maturing, you know, I want to set a good example for my daughter. Oh, my God, I'm getting a headache. It sounds very appealing. Blow me away, please. <laughs> Just kill me now. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas hey. Show. Oh, yeah, the Tom Likas Show. Thank you, Dean. Stopping it off, please. Dean is hooking me up here. Your professor standing at the lectern here on Likas 101 with the shortest commercial breaks we've ever had before. That's right. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Omar on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, I have a problem, Tom. I'll bet you do. Yeah, I do. Um, I got a. I I live with a roommate that's a female, and I'm actually going out with a girl. I'm a one year relationship. Why are you in a relationship? You're 21 years old. Yeah, I know. That's what. I don't know. That's. I don't know. That's what. What do you I mean you don't know? To. You're well. Then 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 I want an answer. Uh, I think it's. I don't know. I think it's got no I'm, game, son. Yeah, that's what I think it is. It's just easy to get some. Oh, Jesus. The price is too high. Yeah, I know. Wouldn't and, you be um, better off sharpening your game? Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking. I'm actually thinking about uh, leaving her, but, you know, I don't want to hurt her feelings. Who anything. cares about her feelings? It's all about you. Yeah, you're right, Tom. Step it up, Omar. Yeah, that's what that's what that's what I'm gonna do. But well, well, what do you think I should do then, Tom? <laughs> I told you, end it. End it. End All right. it. All right. You are Ooh. too young to have a serious relationship. Instead, work on your game. Develop a bullpen. Five okay. different women in your bullpen. All right, Tom. Sounds good. You know, you get your fave five in there. Okay, cool, Tom. Hey, Tom. Yes? Hello? Yes, Tom, uh, can you take me out Kobe style? I can indeed. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. I'm your professor, Tom Likas on Likas one oh one. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh wow, Tim in uh Tim and Temecula on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom. Tim. Hey, um I'm twenty one, I live in Temecula. I am still a virgin. I was very religious until about a year ago. And I've been trying to get laid, and I'm just not having any success. Are you still religious? Not so much. What do you mean, not so much? I believe there's a God, a creator, but of that, not, not uh, nothing. And what church were you a member of? Uh, Hope Lutheran Church. Okay. And uh, they wanted you to be a virgin until you got married. Uh, it wasn't their choice for me to be a virgin. It was my choice, and I'm not religious anymore, so I don't really see the point. All right. Well, you need to uh, practice. You are 21, so you're old enough to go to bars. 
Mm -hmm. uh, one great thing about Temecula is there's plenty of places to meet chicks, and and the reason is because you got wineries there. Yeah, that wineries are a great place to meet chicks. Okay. I mean that Callaway Winery. Have you ever been there? I haven't been to any of the wineries. They've got a great there. restaurant there. Uh, chicks go there, and frequently that's like girls' day out. You know, a lot of chicks go like in pairs. And you can run into chicks, and you can. You, the thing for you is you have to start practicing on your game. Okay. So you have to start practicing chatting up chicks. Okay. And uh, have no expectation of having sex with them. Just start chatting them up. Start seeing what floats their boat. Start okay. seeing what makes them react. Make sense? It does. So and and then eventually you'll be able to take it the next step. But that's what you've got to do. And my recommendation, since you're in Temecula, first stop, go to the wineries on like a Sunday. Okay. Start about noon. Callaway is the Callaway's got a restaurant. It's a cool winery, and uh, I saw some nice talent there when I was there. Okay. I think it's the nicest winery in Temecula. Callaway. Callaway, the, the, the company that makes wine and golf clubs. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, can you blow me up? Yes, yes, Tim, I can. Tom, 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's Likas 101 from Hollywood. Tom Likas here at 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Nick on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Nick. Hey, I got a, I got a good success story for you. Okay. Um, when I was younger, I, I was a bit of a pussy. Um, I married young. I had a kid young. I got married at 20. Uh, my son was born just before I turned 21. Um, since then, I'm divorcing my wife after I was introduced to you by my best friend about a year ago. Um, Very nice. I listen to you as much as I possibly can. The job that I have now, I'm able to listen to the whole show. I love it. Um, thank you for all the advice you've given me. To everyone who's listening to Tom right now, listen to him. He knows what he's talking about. Um, since I've separated my wife, I went back to girls that I've dated before. I've banged the hell out of them. Um, one of them invited me over to have a threesome with her and her friend, but it turns out she just wanted me to bang her friend and said that night, so I banged her friend. Um, uh -huh. about a couple weeks later, I found a new girl at the bar. That night she said I wasn't going to get anything. Maybe about a half hour after that, I banged the hell out of her too. Wow. Um, Look at I've, you. I've, I've got a great life, Tom, and I owe it to you and my best friend. So thank you. Thank you so very much. I am here to help, Nick. How, by the way, how did, uh, your, how did your wife react when you told her you were going to skip town? Um, well, I'm still, I'm still in town. I, she still lives in town with me. You know, I see my son every day. Um, my goal with my son is when he gets older, hopefully you're still on the air. If you're not, I'm going to teach him like this one-on-one to, to the best of my ability. Yes, it has to be passed down from generation to generation. I, again, thank you. Thank you so very much. And everyone, listen to Tom. He knows what the hell he's talking about. Thank um, you for telling your story, Nick. Can, That's going to be inspiring to a lot of people. Can you please take me out old school followed by a bong hit? Yes, of course I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Robert on the Tom Likas show. Likas one hundred one. Hello. Good evening, Professor. Yes, sir. Uh, so I'm uh, recently out of a six year relationship. I'm thirty two. Uh, not was not married. No kids. Uh, just uh, seemed like the thing to do for six years. Uh, turned out to not be the thing to do for six years. But uh, anyhow. Uh, during that time, I seem to have de evolved uh, in terms of uh, uh, courting the ladies, if you will. Uh, so I was hoping you might uh, help me break off some of the rust and, uh, you know, hone the teeth to get the killer instinct back because, uh, you know, me and Miss Michigan, it's uh, getting awfully lonely. 
Yeah, well, what you got to do is you got to start practicing uh, treating women like crap. Okay. And um, it's always good after you've gotten out of a relationship, first of all, number one, to sleep with as many women as possible. And that means they don't have to look perfect. They don't have to be perfect. Like, it'd be some chunk of chunkas out there. There could be some uh, chicks that uh, don't meet up with your high standards. Just to get in the, you know, in the feel of it again. You know how many times a major league pitcher will do a rehab assignment? So they send him down to single A ball. And there he is pitching to players that are way under his league. But it's just to get his arm in shape. So if after a pitcher has been, uh, you know, on the disabled list for a while, they send him down for the rehab assignment. Right, right. And there he is pitching in San Bernardino, or there he is pitching, uh, uh, you know, uh, in Fresno or something like that. The third bag. And, yeah, yeah, and he's just, he just, he just getting that arm back in shape, you know? He's just remembering how to step on the rubber and throw the ball. And then eventually he works his way back up to the big league team. Yeah, but, uh, you, you know, uh, Tom, I feel like I'm going out to the places where they're congregating. Uh, you know, there's plenty of them out there. I'm, I'm, I'm not short of being around them, but, uh, seems like when I get there, like, the most hideous things come out of my mouth and they go the other way. Well, all right. You, you, what you want to remember to do is to say as little as possible. <laughs> but the other thing you need to do, you need to pick places where it's like shooting fish in a barrel, okay? Now, in Southern California, some of my favorite places for this kind of activity, El Torito. <laughs> really? Seriously. Any I mean, particular night or just any night? <laughs> any night. You got to remember, there's places like El Torito and uh, TGI Fridays where your basic receptionist goes out because she can't afford to go out to a really nice place like the W Hotel or something like that. Right. You know, so I mean, it, it, keep in mind, women are the cheapest creatures on earth. If you meet a woman at the W Hotel, there's a guy there buying the $14 martinis for her. If you go to TGI Fridays and they're drinking $4 Long Island iced teas, chances are they're paying for it themselves. That's a uh, that's an interesting observation. Same thing with, uh, like I say, uh, El Torito, TGI Fridays, Applebee's, you know, any of those places that have a bar. I'm, Macaroni Grill. I, I might be skeptical if I didn't know you had the clinical research behind you to back these statements up. I've been out there. I've gotten the job. To, I've sat at TGI Fridays. Uh, there's one in the West Valley. I've spent many an evening. You know, there's sports on TV there on, like, Monday Night Football or whatever, and you're out there, and here are these chicks. They're all 21, 22, 23-year-old. They are receptionists. They're office workers. They're grunts. And they are there because they can't afford to buy themselves a drink at an expensive place. So well, uh, go you know, there, you know, meet uh, the chicks who are the easy marks. Okay. You know, I, I like I, uh, previous lessons I may have uh, picked up from you, I believe, was, you know, like I go into the place, I try to act nonchalant like I'm not there trying to get them. Right. But, uh, you know, and almost trying to seem like I've got somewhere better to be. But, uh, that, you know, again... Uh, but you might be shooting too high in terms of the kind of place, the uh, cost of the drinks. When I went to TGI Fridays, you sit at the bar, there's always a friendly bartender, and a TV. So you're watching the game. Right. You're talking to the bartender. Right. The bartender is serving these chicks every now and then. If you get friendly enough with the bartender, he can tell you, you know, who's been there for a while, who's had a few too many. Okay. Then you use the bartender to help you out, leave him a big tip, because you might need him again someday. Indeed. I'll tell you what, if you leave, if you tip well, the bartender can be your best friend. Well, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm no, uh, I'm no slouch in that department, but, uh, hey, any, yeah, no, uh, but you, what you have to do is you have to make a quid pro quo. You have to let the guy know, hey, 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 um, you know, here's, here's, here's 10 bucks for a $4 drink. Um, which chick at this bar has been here for a while? Can you, like, kind of point me in the right direction? Use the guy. Okay. And, and pay him for his service. The bartender knows who's easy. The bartender knows who's available. Right, indeed. The bartender sees the same crowd all the time. One thing I do is I get friendly with the bartender. Okay. Yeah, it's the best investment you will make. Yeah. Plus, the bartender will frequently comp you a drink or, you know, have be a little heavy-handed on the vodka right. if you're a good tipper. Yeah, yeah, okay. You win every way. 
uh, could you uh, perhaps offer me a few quick retorts on the common uh, female rebuttals of, well, I'm not interested, I'm in a relationship? Uh... Well, I'm not interested. There's nothing you can do about that. That's pretty honest. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you know, let's face it. Nine out of ten women will not be interested. Okay. There's a very high rejection rate. That's how it works. Right. But you just have to keep I'm plowing into it. Huh? I'm used to that. Yeah, well, that, you just keep plowing through. Uh, it, you know, it, it, believe me, in the, in the uh, direct uh, mail business, a 2% return, they call it a 2% return, a 2% response rate, is considered good. Hmm. So uh, for all that junk mail you throw away, every 98 people that throw it away, two actually respond. Okay. And so you have to remember that that's how it is. Okay. All right. Well, but uh, uh, but believe me, I'd be once you start, even if you get one, a two out of a hundred or one out of fifty, um, eventually you will start to see what works and what doesn't work with these women. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to uh, do some stretching and break off the rust and uh, get out there. Yes, and just keep hammering. Look, when you go to a bar, just remember the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to have a few drinks, you're going to watch the game. Right. You know, tonight the Lakers are playing the Suns. What a great night it would be to sit at a bar, have a few drinks, and watch Kobe versus Shaq. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, if you never got laid, you would have that. Well, I'm, I'm, that's, that's what I love about you, Professor. You're always looking on the sunny side. Trust me when I tell you, there's always a positive out of this. All right. So well, yeah, the, yeah, the worst that will happen to you, if you do that tonight, you will see a great basketball game, you'll have a few drinks, you'll make a friend at the bar, the bartender, and who knows, in the future, the bartender may be able to guide you to the right chicks. All right. Well, uh, I've, uh, I've made some notes, and, uh, well, I ask you that you uh, blow me up so I can make room for uh, other of your followers. I can indeed. Tomorrow, we're at Quiet Cannon in Montebello. Someone's going to win a trip to Vegas to watch Oscar De La Hoya fight Manny Pacquiao. That person might be you. The Tom Likas Show.